Hi, this is your host Apni Bhartiya and welcome to another episode of Tier 4 Let's Talk. And today we have with us Gur Staif, President of Digital Business Automation at PMC Software. Gur, it's good to have you on the show. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. We hear a lot about supply chain these days. And when we talk about supply chain, I'm not talking about uh, just the uh, physical supply chain. Actually, the word supply chain came from the physical supply chain to the software world uh, because every company today is software driven. They have cloud strategy. Without you know software or cloud, these companies will not even survive and succeed in today's world. So. When we talk about supply chain, whether we are talking about software supply chain or the physical supply chain, it is a mass, major pain point for companies of all sizes. Uh, I want to talk about uh, some of the technologies that BMC is working on to address uh, these uh, supply chain complexities. And one of those technologies is Control M. So talk a bit about Control M. What does it do? How does it work? And how does it make things uh, simpler and easier for these companies? So Control M is an orchestration and automation engine that, that helps users, allows users to run thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of, of different tasks and jobs in the right order, in the right way, including recovery actions and everything else that they need. And it does that across a variety of platforms, systems, applications, so that when organizations have complex uh, flow, complex workflows, complex chains, such as supply chains, Control M provides tremendous value in, in running across those and, and managing that type of workload. Perfect. Uh, can you also talk about any new updates that are coming uh, to Control M? We just uh, had a new version of Control M, and uh, I'll be happy to share a lot more about that as, as we go on. Yeah. So, so let's start with you know uh, the the new version. What's in there? Uh, features, functionalities. The new version is all about freedom within the framework, right? As as uh, IT organizations are trying to push more things closer to the business users, right? Uh, it, uh, what it, it's all about allowing IT to maintain some framework and, and be able to handle compliance and uh, regulatory, uh, re regulatory compliance, reporting standards, et cetera, while allowing the business users the freedom to run their own element, whether it's supply chain or financial updates or whatever it is, really allow the business users to have freedom within the framework that IT provides. And it does that across a variety of system, a variety of applications, and that provides tremendous value to our customers. Uh, there's a, a, a lot more new integrations. There is a lot of support for cloud technologies. There are a lot of capabilities there that are all designed to make life easier for our customers. I want to go back to the point that you talked about freedom within the framework. Uh, so talk about what does this mean also, because when today's world, when we look at companies, a lot of when we look at a lot of solutions, they are opinionated. At the same time, a lot of companies, they do, they do want flexibility, they do want freedom. So talk about what do you mean by freedom within the framework here? So it's really interesting. If we look at how the world evolved over the last several years, and in many ways, it's been happening for a lot longer than that. Uh, IT used to be the only people that, that dealt with computers, right? So, so anything that had to do with computers had to go to an IT department and everything was in a data center. And today with the advent of cloud computing, with a phone, with, with a smartphone, with all that, I mean, my smartphone has more processing power than some of the biggest mainframe did, mainframes did just, you know, 20 years ago. So Everybody understands technology now. In many cases, you know, my 18-year-old son can do things that, that surprise me sometimes. So when you go to a business user today and say, you can't do anything on your own, you have to go to IT, that just doesn't fly, right? Business users want the flexibility. They want to be able to do a, a many, many things. Just think of it in the context of what is the cost of a terabyte of data if I buy it on Amazon, or if I ask my IT department for it. Now, if I ask my IT department, it's much more expensive, but it comes with backups and real high availability and all those good things. But if I say everything is that expensive, that doesn't fly. The business wants a lot of flexibility. So in order to give the business that flexibility, we want to push things and let the business do their own thing. But if we completely abdicate responsibility from IT, we run into regulatory issues. We could run into compliance issues. We could run into security issues. So IT needs to maintain some framework. So the whole point is how does IT maintain a compliance framework 
maintains some standards while giving the business freedom to perform their job the best way they can. And that is what freedom within the framework is all about. And since you're talking about uh, that uh, it sometimes goes beyond additional IT users as well. Last fall, you folks also uh, launched Control M Workflow Insights. Uh, there was Python client there and a lot of integration with a lot of other cloud data services as well. So just, you know, the discussion we just had about, you know, going beyond just IT users. Talk about how does Control M kind of enable uh, users as you also talk about, they want that flexibility as well. Uh, but at the same time, IT teams need frameworks, guardrails, so other users, you know, they remain within those boundaries. So th those two uh, things that you mentioned are great examples, right? Because Python is all about allowing any Python developer and every business has a lot of people who know Python and can write data pipelines, et cetera, using Python to create their own flows and create their own logic. Whereas at the same time, Workflow Insights allows IT to understand what's going on in the environment how many jobs are created, who does what, what, what things are happening. So IT can still maintain an understanding of what's happening in the environment without restricting the business and, to, and saying everything has to happen through IT. So those are two great examples of how we provide freedom within the framework to our customers, right? They maintain compliance, they maintain all the regulatory uh, framework that they need while providing the business with complete freedom using things like Python. Now let's talk about uh, some of the users who are taking advantage of uh, uh, Control M. And if you look at the example of Hershey, you know, uh, they kind of they say that you know it literally runs their business. So, so talk about uh, their story and also if you can share other stories where companies of that size are leveraging it. So when you talk about Hershey as an example, you know you think candy bars and syrup and, and, and things like that. But the reality is, just think about the fact that they have thousands and thousands of places where you can buy their stuff. And it's of tremendous value for them to know exactly what's moving in every location, what's not moving, how much inventory they have, and, and all that. That provides them with tremendous leverage when they negotiate. That provides them with tremendous insights that allows them to go and and to go and, and stock things on time so that they don't have shortages of, of, of certain things. And we've all seen what happens now with, with shortages. So that's extremely valuable. The problem is when you have all those different points of sales, all those different locations, and you've got to collect data from multiple locations, you've got to consolidate all this data, it has to go across a large number of different systems and applications. So something has to orchestrate all that. Right? So you have a lot of developers who write pieces of this, and some of it may run on the mainframe, and some of it may run in, in an ERP, and some of it may run in the cloud, but somehow you've got to orchestrate all those things together, and that is what we do for Hershey's, and that is what we do for other customers. Uh, an example could be Carrefour, right? Carrefour was expanding, and they were trying to build those stores that are in the city, not big grocery stores, but smaller store, what they call express city format store. That drove an increase of nearly 12-fold in the number of transfers that they had to do. Like, it's all data-driven, right? Supply chain is all about moving data from place to place, right? So they had that, that grew almost 12-fold. They used the capability we call MFT, or Managed tra File Transfer within Control M, to help drive that. And it allowed them to have accurate pricing, uh, uh, inventory, timelines, everything accurately across a growing number of stores. And again, that's tremendous value. Uh, a different perspective of the same thing is Rail Inc., right? Part of supply chain is also moving things around. So if you think about it from Rail Inc.'s perspective, Control M and the orchestration capabilities help them track real-time location of every single element and every single car, right? All those freight cars. So they can do just-in-time loading and unloading of, of, of cargo. Uh, they actually accelerate the amount of data they can process by, it increased by ninefold, right, with very little uh, effort by just driving a better 
orchestration and automation around those systems. Yeah, and when we look at companies of this size, you know, automation, actually, if you look at the cloud native world, automa without automation, none of this will be possible. We cannot even think about this. Uh, you know, recently, you know, uh, your CTO, we sat down and we talked about a lot of things. And one of the discussion was also around, you know, autonomous digital enterprise. And he mentioned there, you know, that that was kind of being data driven. So can you talk about AD uh, data in context of control and how does you know that play? I mean you touched upon that when you're giving these examples but let's just go a bit deeper the autonomous digital enterprise is all about you know when you think about it from a business perspective it's all about outcomes right you want greater business agility you want the enterprise to be data driven right you want it to become a data driven enterprise it's about uh, actionable insights right being able to get insights and being able to act on those and this is control M is all about those, right? Uh, so if you think about it, when you talk about when you talk about supply chain as an example, it's one thing to uh, 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 to process a lot of data, but it's a whole different thing to actually have insight that you can act upon. For example, inventory, right? And and what's what product is moving, what product is not moving. So this is the core of being an autonomous digital enterprise, right? Being able to take actions based on real-time insights that come from real-time data. Now, it all gets more complicated the more sophisticated your environment becomes. I mean, we all have some legacy, right? Cloud is great, but many companies still have on-prem still have some legacy applications, still have in some cases mainframes. And to really drive value, you gotta connect across all of those. You can't just say I'm solving it for this environment. You gotta solve it across all your systems and applications. And that is what Control M excels at. Excellent. Uh, I think I have uh, everything that was there in today's agenda. Uh, is there anything else that you, I have one more question that could be more or less about when we talk about supply supply chain, we talk about, I mean, the, the term has come from the physical supply chain. You folks are actually helping these companies with their physical supply chain, but they also have to deal with the software supply chain because everybody is using open source and so many technologies are there. So I would love to know what kind of trends you are seeing, especially with this economic downturn, potential recession, companies are also looking at cost cutting. So that means they have to become more efficient, you know. So, so if you can, you know, kind of reflect on that, that would be great as well. I, I'll say it this way. Uh, our business has been, uh, we have been fortunate enough to be successful through several economic downturns. Uh, what we are seeing is the need for automation always increases. Uh, when economic situation is difficult, people look at automation as a way to save money. When uh, the economy does well, people are looking at automation as the way as a way to accelerate growth, right? So automation is one of those technologies. Automation and orchestration is one of those things that there's always a need, right? Uh, I wouldn't go as far to say as anything is ever recession proof. That would be a bold statement. Uh, but what we have seen through several uh, uh, contraction cycles, whether uh, 08, uh, uh, 2020, is that a decrease in economic activity doesn't always translate to people spending less money on automation. In many cases, it's quite the opposite because automation does both save money and make money. And, and that is a it's a good place to be. Good. Thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about not only Control M, but how a company like Hershey and other uh, are leveraging these technologies, but also kind of also share that autonomous is something that is going to drive companies no matter whether it's recession or no recession. Uh, I really loved the way you presented it that, you know, when you need growth, then also it helps. When you want to cost cutting, then also it helps. So thanks for sharing those insights. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.